Hello, my name is Mahima Chander. And I'm William Harrington. Uh, we conducted our research um, at the YSP program on n-body problems and on simulations of particles. Our sponsor was Dr. Cleef, and then our graduate student mentor was Michael. Uh, thank you for your help. Now, in physics, n-body problems can be um, used to help predict and model the interactions between celestial objects. And so, by researching these problems, we gain a better understanding about the movements of the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and other kinds of visible stars. Specifically, the solution to Laplace's equation, that allows us to understand how, um, that allows us to understand the gravitational and the electrical fluids and how they kind of move in space. Essentially, then, we're also able to model how particles then move around and their kind of velocities. With the harmonic oscillator, then, we're able to also figure out the power of these particles. And together, then, um, our professor, he created a system with other of his colleagues, and they basically modeled how particles do move. Um, they took it a bit further, though. Because in some cases, with the harmonic oscillator, there are errors that emerge when particles begin to become infinitely close. Theoretically, particles are able to become infinitely close, but never really touch. Whereas in the equation, sometimes errors do emerge. They then included this variable, the epsilon, to essentially regularize the equation. And by doing that, they were able to minimize the errors and create a more accurate simulation. And that singularity error arises when you take the derivative of the, plus of the fundamental solution, you get uh, a 1 over r term in there. And that r represents the distance between the, the two particles, as shown here, xj and xk. So as this distance here becomes infinitely small, the derivative will blow up and essentially cause an error. So the regularization will add a very, very small term to that denominator that essentially makes it so there isn't a blow up and error there. And so while this sounds very cool and um, mathematical, that's not really what Liam and I did at our time here at YSP. Um, we were able to use the research done by Dr. Queef and his colleagues to then go on two separate investigations. So the first thing that we did was we were trying to find a relationship between the minimum distance among particles in a given simulation, the regularization level, and the error rate in the Hamiltonian generated. So to do this, we did three separate runs, and within each run, each of these points here represents a trial done with these kind of parameters. And what we basically did see is that, for instance, in the plot with all the way to my right, with two particles and a regularization zero, the correlation between the minimum distance between particles and the error rate was about 0.4. Whereas when we increased the regularization to about four, we saw that there was a much stronger correlation at about 0.6. And now, um, theoretically though, particles in space, they should be able to get infinitely close. And so what we did see with this kind of simulation is that as we increased the regularization rate, the error diminished and then the simulation was much more accurate. And overall, that kind of proved to us that the original system that Dr. Queef and his colleagues created, it was imitating what we'd expect to happen in real life, meaning that it's accurate. And these regularization levels, zero, two, and four, just represent different methods of approximating the solutions. So like regulation zero is like Euler's, and then as you get higher in the numbers, you use different higher order methods. So in the second numerical experiment, our goal was to develop a program that basically mimics the actions of the harmonic oscillator, which is what we were working with previously, but at a much faster, cheaper rate. So essentially what it does is it starts the particles in the exact positions that the harmonic oscillator would. And we ran a trial of the harmonic oscillator to calculate at each time step the mean and variances in each box of the grid. And at each time step, it would move the particles in our faster simulation using the mean value of the original particles in that box. So let's say the mean velocity was this direction, so it would move it there. And at the next time step, the mean velocity was this way, and so on and forth and so forth. And as you can see, our model is much, much faster than the harmonic oscillator. So depending on the number of particles, you have in your simulation, 
the time it takes to run the program exponentially increases uh, to the point where it gets very impractical. As you can see, at about 100,000 particles, it would take three months to run the harmonic oscillator, whereas our program would only would take less than a minute. And the reason why this is actually really important is, let's say, um, any kind of scientist, they're conducting a study, and they're, when we make more particles in our system, we're essentially trying to test it more. We're trying to expand our parameters and get more accurate solutions. And in many cases, waiting for a day may not be a big deal, but essentially for three months, that can take forever. Whereas with the system that we were able to formulate, the simulation can run in like under a, sec in under a minute, which is phenomenal. And in addition to being uh, very fast, it's also pretty accurate to the, what the harmonic oscillator would produce. So what we've done here is at three different time steps, 6, 56, and 313, which I'll explain what this means in a second, um, we have shown the number of particles in each box on the grid. So at the top row here, we have the harmonic oscillator at the bottom, our model. And um, the different colors represent the different boxes. And so you can kind of see that they are roughly similar. Um, so basically at time step six, when we start all the particles originally, they merge close together and then they, once they become really close together, expand out like this. So at time step six, it's when they're coming really close together. And then at 56 and 313, they're basically becoming farther away from each other. So that's what these time steps represent. And as you can see, it's more accurate the closer the particles are together. And as they expand, it does get less accurate. However you know, the two blue boxes here, the green boxes are relatively similar. So for the CPU time um, uh, in, in, uh, decrease, it does give us a good approximation. And more like while at the beginning of our, like when we use smaller time steps, the uh, model was more accurate. The reason why we see a few disparities when we're at the time step 313, for instance, is mainly because um, the particles then often go on their own kind of trajectories. And although um, that's what happened, we see that they still kind of maintain the same kind of motion as the original simulation. So there are, like, we see these similarities and these accuracies. Uh, in conclusion then, through our first experiment, we did find a correlation between the minimum distance among particles and the error rate of the system, and it grew stronger as we increased regularization parameters. That was important because then it confirmed that because in reality, because particles are supposed to be able to come infinitely closer, and our system also showed the same exact thing, it meant that our system was also working properly and mimicking the um, original harmonic oscillator properly. And, se and secondly, with our second experiment, we were actually able to develop a system that mimicked the actions of Laplace's equation in a cheaper and a remarkably quicker way. That's useful in many ways because now we can also reduce the amount of time we have to wait for simulations to run while also still gaining um, accurate results. And for references, we just had the paper written by Dr. Quaife and his colleagues um, that regularized the harmonic oscillator in Laplace's equation. So, and we'd like to thank Michael and Dr. Quay for all the help they've given us in this and the support, so thank and you. Thank you to all of you for coming here.